Whatever came down the pike, you know. Why do you I think mean, we went that way. I mean, you know, Halloween when I was a kid and you were a kid, you know, it was like, okay, well, candy, you want fun. Religion and the United States government have one thing in common with each other. They both need a boogeyman, see? And, you know, obviously uh, there always will be a boogeyman. As long as they got a boogeyman, they can scare people into stuff. Uh -huh. Well, well, we're going to talk about government in a minute because absolutely you're thinking about running for mayor. Yeah. Of Kenosha. Yeah. Thinking about it. Uh, All right. Well, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to show another let's, scene let's move, here. Yeah, let's move to another scene. All right, go ahead. It's almost like a mirror here. You've got a, a farm scene in the background with uh, the old uh, sun setting and the dark sky coming in. I mean, this is almost like Jerry Smith's pumpkin farm right here. Yeah, well, there's Jer Jerry and the tractor right there. And <laughs> that's Rosemary in the pumpkin stand. But this was, uh, this was actually a fun piece to do because it was really like... Uh, a folk art tradition and I think that pumpkin farms now especially in our time they are sort of the last vestige of a farmer folk art setup and uh, well it's great to be part of that and, and do these murals but this one I really had a lot of fun with and sort of that that folk art scent and it had a sense it has a more natural theme to it than a lot of my other uh, scarier paintings well you've know. done a lot of the art around this place yeah right? yeah a lot of the, a lot of the bigger backdrop things yes now how long would something like this take to do I can't remember exactly how much time I spent on this one. I mean, there's only so much time. I mean, you can go forever on these things if you want to. But I'll probably add to it next year. A few things will get added here and there. But it was like uh, a good part of the summer in the heat. I was out here every day painting. Sweating. Sweating. Sweat. Blood, sweating. sweat, and tears. But it's nice when it's hot like that, the paint dries quicker, you know? <laughs> now, obviously, for people who don't know, you know, this thing starts when? When does the pumpkin farm we opened, uh, I think it was on, uh, well, you know, basically the haunted bus opened on the 18th of September. So, the, you know, like the, the second to the last weekend in September, it's open. And it'll go through the end of uh, uh -huh. October? Right. All right. Well, now, if I'm the mayor of Kenosha, or want to be the mayor of Kenosha, this is the place to be. You see all these people out here. You can be shaking hands or, uh -huh. or bones, if you have bones. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> And they could talk to you about your your campaign. Well, they have been a lot of the you know I, like I said, there's constant constant uh, interest in the me running again, uh, and that's what fuels the ideas of, of you know sticking my neck out. But uh, <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that. Let's go to another place. Okay. Now, if Dale, if you, if you were to run for mayor, and it sounds like you're going to, would this be what City Hall would look like when we get done? It might be. I always said we could remodel the municipal building to look like Vlad Tepish's castle in Transylvania. Think of the tourism that that would bring. It would absolutely. Of course, Even we're going to the Civil War Museum. Huh? Oh, we're going to we're going to kick all that junk out of the Civil War Museum. That'll be the new horror museum. <laughs> and then we're going to erect a statue of Godzilla that will rise out of the harbor every hour on the hour and blow fire on a miniature downtown Waukegan. Oh. Now would Godzilla look anything like John Anaramian or Lenny Palmer? <laughs> well, he, he just imagine if the two mutated into one. Oh, <laughs> no, I, don't, I think I want to go there. Uh, <laughs> just leave those guys alone. But seriously, <laughs> you are thinking about running for mayor. Well, of course. I think uh, it's going to be a tough transitional time for the city. And uh, I, I think I could be a good uh, political role model for people that are sick of the cookie-cutter career politician uh, that, that they've been accustomed to. You know, maybe it's time for business as unusual. Oh, yeah, business I as unusual. That's a good one. You get yeah. that one. But uh, I think maybe the maybe the city's ready to have someone from their own ranks. It's time time to start taking care of Joe Kenosha a little bit. I mean, I like the museums and everything that's going on. The festivals at the harbor, great. That's fantastic. But we've got other issues. Public safety is a big issue. Um, I know I, we've got a lot of issues even in my neighborhood, and. Uh, we just can't have our officers wasting their time taking down rummage sale signs at this point. They've got much bigger fish to fry. Um, obviously, there's a lot involved with running a municipal government. I mean, seriously, do you think you could, you could handle that? Well, I'll have a cabinet, uh, like a Knights of the Round Table. Perhaps you'll have to get drafted in there, too. And I'll I'd be a ghoulie, my, then, wouldn't my, I? My advisors, you know. <laughs> I'd be an official ghoulie, wouldn't I, at that point? Would you be a ghoulie? I guess. You kind of yeah. are a ghoulie already because yeah. you're into this stuff a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit more than I should. Um, one more time, let's talk about Halloween. You're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff, right? Well, I'm doing a lot of stuff here. Uh, not that much this year. I kind of, uh, no, no big ballroom party that I know of this oh, really? year. Uh, maybe, maybe like I said, the uh, the haunted mansion thing at my own abode. Maybe that's going to happen. But uh, this is where it's at. Don't go anywhere else. 
come to the pumpkin farm. This is where the action is. You know, and even a husky guy like me can appreciate the cornfields and the uh, the pumpkins and uh, uh -huh. and all the other stuff. It's not just for kids. Well, look around. You got happy people everywhere at the pumpkin farm. Yeah, that's true. Now, uh, okay, one more thing. One more time on the hours. Oh, out here? Yep. I'm here every day from noon until 8 o'clock, sometimes earlier, sometimes later, but you can guarantee between noon and 8 o'clock, seven days a week, the haunted forest will be open, and I, I will be here in one arc in, incarnation. I like to wear different costumes myself when I'm out here, you know? Really? Right. And, and people should be, be forewarned that not everything here is inanimate. Right. right. There are things that move. Right, right. You know, I, I haven't seen any of those other mayoral candidates wandering around here yet. You know, well, usually I bump mistake. into a few of them. That's you know, their mistake, you know. So um, well, we've got a couple of rational ones, I think, but then a couple others, I think, are loose cannons. <laughs> and well, I, the present company may be included. Accepted. Well, I, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time out of a busy day like this, and people should get the chance to come well, on. Well, this has here become now. a Halloween tradition yeah, now, uh, Dr. D on the Shook Show. Now, I'm, right. of course, I'm going to have to move in on you know when you start having the debates and everything. We'll have to well, get in. Well, maybe I can be a guest debates? on the. Uh, oh, I'm going to try. Because obviously Scott can't host the debates now, can he? Who's Scott? Okay. I see what uh, that is. And, and, you know, yeah, maybe we'll uh, we'll do a cross thing and I'll come on your show sometime. Yeah, you should come on my show as well. No, that's really horrible. So no, we don't be better, we better not. It. Scary. Okay, we you can know. have to talk to you about your new gig at the Shepherd. There you hey, go. How new is that gig? Pretty new. This there last you year. Go. See, we're All already right. talking. Well, thanks a lot, Dale. I appreciate it. And thanks a lot for joining us in another Yeah, discussion. well, it was great Shaking having you out here. And, you know, I'm glad you enjoyed the Haunted Forest. I did. And I'm, I'm. Come back at night. Sufficiently scared. You come at night. All right, that's when the freaks come out. Come back, and I should take care. I'm Officer Walsh of the Kenosha Police Department here to remind you that school zones save lives. Many drivers will pass through at least one school zone on their daily trips around town. Yet our statistics show that less than half those drivers will reduce their speed to the posted 15 mile per hour limit. Fail to follow school zone laws can result not only in fines of several hundreds of dollars and loss of points on your driving record, but it can also be the cause of a serious injury or death to a child. By reducing your speed, you will allow yourself enough time to react to the unpredictable behavior of children in school zones. So be aware when you enter a school zone. Look for children and school crossing guards and reduce that speed to 15 miles per hour. Remember, a school zone is only as safe as the drivers in them. So be alert, slow down, and be prepared to stop. Hi, I'm Officer Wamble of the Kenosha Police Department Neighborhood Watch Unit. You know, the Neighborhood Watch Program is a key element of crime prevention in our community. Neighbors band together to help one another, while at the same time forming relationships with the police department to solve and prevent crime. To start a Neighborhood Watch Program, please call 657-3937 or 657 and the word EYES. You can also reach us at our website, kenoshapolice.com. This is pretty secure. Remember. Being a part of Neighborhood Watch is like having a police squad in every driveway.
Hi, I'm Officer Walsh of the Kenosha Police Department here to remind you that school zones save lives. Many drivers will pass through at least one school zone on their daily trips around town. Yet our statistics show that less than half those drivers will reduce their speed to the posted 15 mile per hour limit. Fail to follow school zone laws can result not only in fines of several hundreds of dollars and loss of points on your driving record, but it can also be the cause of a serious injury or death to a child. By reducing your speed, you will allow yourself enough time to react to the unpredictable behavior of children in school zones. So be aware when you enter a school zone. Look for children and school crossing guards and reduce that speed to 15 miles per hour. Remember, a school zone is only as safe as the drivers in them. So be alert, slow down, and be prepared to stop.